on this week's episode of Good Looking Out. Kalana Barfield-Brown and Ducky Confetti are going to let a fiery designer from Alabama know if she has what it takes to be the next top streetwear brand. We're then gonna sit down and talk some simple facts. And last, we're gonna take the best question from our complex viewers. This is Good Looking Out. Today, we're gonna to give an upcoming designer an opportunity to pitch their brand to us. Joining me for a high-level view of the fashion industry is fashion expert Kalana Barfield-Brown. Kalana Barfield-Brown climbed from intern to expert and influencer as the fashion and beauty editor at large at InStyle Magazine. And stylist and designer, Ducky Confetti. Ducky Confetti is a tastemaker and designer who has styled Beyonce, Tiana Taylor, Fabulous, and so many more. All right, let's meet today's entrepreneur. My name is Olivia Anthony. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and I am the founder and CEO of House of Olivia Anthony. And today I'm presenting Live Streetwear. So Live Streetwear, this is my first body of work. I've had SZA, Kalani, The Skins, Audra the Rapper, Rock and Live Streetwear. Just to have the opportunity to show my clothes to a panel that's done this before in the industry is amazing, especially for my first year. I'm so excited. I don't know who is going to be up there, but it's just an honor that I'm about to meet them. So I'm excited. My name is Olivia Anthony. I am the founder and CEO of House of Olivia Anthony. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, so a Southern girl. I knew I wanted to chase my dreams. I graduated and moved to New York City where I got hit by reality. You know, I'm hustling, working during the day, and intern at different fashion houses at night, and still trying to carry my brand. So last year in 2017, I jumped out on faith and I quit my job and started working for my brand full time. And today I'm presenting you Live Streetwear. My brand is really inspired by like the 90s. I love the DNA of just like being able to be free, colorful, loud. And so this collection is called My Love Letter to Our Culture. You know, I'm a Southern girl, so I love a baby hair. I love a twisted cricket nail. And so I wanted to bring that in my collection. So this one was um, shot inspired by Freak Nick, you know, the dirty, dirty South and just being loud. and embracing our culture because, you know, for the longest I kind of used to be ashamed of it because I felt like, you know, for twerking, got grills, it's, you know, it's looked down upon, but now it's being embraced by the fashion industry. So I wanted to, like, pay homage to that. My customer is the type of person who set trends, not follow them, doesn't mind being the center of attention, you know, wearing bold colors like yellow and pink, you know, in the fashion industry we feel like we have to live by what we, you know, hear and what we see on Instagram and like, oh, let's be minimal as possible, wear black, but you know, I like to make a statement, live outside the box, and our brand is live bold, live brave, and be you. So, right now, I'm gonna bring in a couple of my homies so you can see how they live, okay? Okay. Okay, Randy. So we have Randy wearing the overalls with the rugby. So, you know, most of our stuff is unisex. You know, back in the day in the 90s, we used to match and take pictures at the mall. You gotta get that funk, so. That's what we're doing. Hey. So we have Michelle, and she's wearing our bodysuit up under, which you can also wear along with the snap-off pants as well. We'll give a little sex, you know, a little vibe. And then last but not least, we have Caleb. He's the trendy guy, you know, he's the guy that everybody wants to follow. He's centrist, he's not following, he lives outside the box. So we have a nice, clean sweatsuit, just chill, fun, can go out and, you know, hang out with it as well. So what collection is this? Like you know. My love letter to our culture. So this is my first body of uh, capsule collection. Uh, what are your price points? So our price points are from 
60 to 90. I didn't want to go over 100 because I wanted to be something that, you know, everybody could afford. Have you done any pop-up shops or are you strictly online? So we've done pop-up shops in Lower East Side, Harlem, and Brooklyn, and I do sell online, but just through my outlet, my website, so. All right, thank you guys. Thanks. As far as your, this particular collection, where can you see this being sold at? Oh, like Open Ceremony, Dover Street Market, Urban Outfitters for sure. That would be like at the top of my list. Everywhere, honestly. It's no limit. What are you inspired by? What designers are you inspired by? Um, and how did you come up with uh, this collection? So I'm really inspired by like Tom Brown and like Mosquito and Jeremy Scott because I like people who tell stories through their clothing. I'm surprised you didn't mention DKNY because when I see this collection, the first thing I think about from the 90s is DKNY yeah. yeah. with the panel, with the different colors and just the whole vibe with the overalls and the jumpsuit. It's very DKNY inspired. Tommy Hilfiger as well. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy Hilfiger, Hilfiger. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fact that the collection is very cohesive. I like the Thank fact you. that you, you know, you stuck with a particular look. I like your choice of color. Like you didn't Thank do, you. a lot of people when they think of the 90s, they automatically run to red, yellow, and royal blue. I like the fact that you, you know, use yellow as your pop, but you also pulled in pink. I probably would have added a pleated skirt, maybe. Stuff is coming. Okay. You know, this is the beginning. It's just me, so it's definitely growing. Okay. I like it. I think you did an amazing job. I, I would totally wear your yeah. stuff. I <laughs> I love that it's unisex. Um, I'm someone who wears men's clothes a lot. Um, and I love that you're targeting both men and women. Um, and I love that you're playing with color. I think it's bold, I think it's bright, and I think you did an amazing job. Thank you, that means a lot. You don't understand. <laughs> I just have good things to add. Like your presentation was amazing. You were prepared. Um, I like the support system that you had and your friends and really just, just making it work for you. Thank you so much. And I love all three of you guys. <laughs> like, seriously. So tell me a little bit about your journey. So you went to college in Alabama, mm -hmm. um, and then from there you moved to New York. Yeah. Um, and how was that? I did the exact same thing after I graduated, moved to New York, and I know it's not easy. So tell me a little bit about your journey. Okay. Um, it was very hard, because you know, like as a girl growing up in the South where everything's handed to her, I'm not gonna cry, that's so embarrassing, but, um... It's not embarrassing, it's an emotion, it's okay. This has been a struggle, but it makes me stronger. And just to be here, even right now, it's like, it's, it's... I hate when people don't jump off of faith and come to New York, because it awards you so much if you really want it and if you fight for it. So it's, it's been a hard, but it's been worth it. And I wouldn't change it for the world, so... So when you got here, did you have a paying job? Did you have an internship? Tell me about that. So I moved here and I was just interning for Fashion Week. I found an ad online. I'm like, okay, let me apply for it. And then I was working at Bloomingdale's and I was also living on my pro fights couch. Shout out to her, AKA. So it was just like, I had connection, but it just, every step of the way, it tests me. Like, how long are you gonna stay on this couch? You gotta find your room. Found the room in Queens, it was literally, as big as this is the closet and then start working at different retail stores and just being unhappy because I knew I had a bigger mission and the time was moving. And a lot of people don't know, like living in New York, you'll move here and just start working and don't even like forget about your dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So I just really had to shift gears and like ask my family, shout out to them, like give me one year to figure it out. So. I'm done. Well, I'm happy that you, you stuck with the course. Um, you know, we have very similar stories. I moved here, I had an internship. When I first started, I was living on my Pro Fights couch. So yes. I, know, I know, I know the hustle. But like I tell everyone, especially when you want to work in fashion, you know, go where the fashion industry is. It's New York. You're going to have the most opportunities. Okay. And stick with the course, you know. Um, it can be challenging. Um, a lot of jobs are unpaid, but if this is something that you truly want to do, you just have to stick with it, and it will. And if you work hard, the doors will open. Um, so I encourage you to keep going. It looks like you've made it pretty far. I think one other thing that I would say for you, I think your designs are amazing, but you have an even greater personality. Um, you're beautiful, so use that because with you know brands, people buy into people even sometimes more than what the product is. So run with it. Thank you, guys.
Well, Olivia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And just going to wish you the best. Thank All right? you. All right, bye. 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 I feel so good. I'm happy that it's over with. I was very nervous. Um, I cried a little, but I feel like I left all of me out there to be vulnerable so people could relate. I was sold by her personality. Mm -hmm. I thought she was super passionate. I remember when I started in fashion, mm -hmm. um, I just saw myself through her. When I saw the panel, I was like, oh my goodness, because I look up to every single one of them. Um, Kalana, uh, which works for InStyle, I literally DM'd her like before I came home um, in January, asking her to be my mentor. So for her to be here today, I just feel like, the universe is talking, God is speaking. I loved when she was just telling us about, you know, taking a leap out on faith. Because I remember there was a point where I had a nine to five, but then I also wanted to manage, like, my sites, my stuff that I was working on. So I love that she took a leap on faith. My whole thing is longevity. Like, what's next after this? You know, because it's only but so long you can stretch this look out. How are you going to grow from this collection? Say she do become very successful with this, everyone's going to be like, well, what's next? I want this. I feel like the advice they gave me was really straight on and straightforward. Just keep on going, stay true to myself, all the things that I need to do in the future. So it was good. As streetwear went upscale, it lifted sales of luxury goods to an estimated $309 billion in 2017. Right now, we're gonna break this down with the simple facts. So, we have Dapper Dan at Gucci. We have Virgil now heading over Louis Vuitton's men's. What does this look like for the young designer coming up now that they get to see these people of color just in these these positions. I mean, I think it's very inspiring, you know, because um, Kanye wanted this position um, with Fendi. Yeah. So just to see Virgil actually get a position as, you know, a designer that's mm -hmm. like big, you know. He's put in a lot of work. He's done a great job with Off-White. So, I mean, I'm just looking forward to it. I always say, if you can see it, you can believe it. So there may be a time you felt that you were never, never be able to reach that level of design. Well, now you see these two black men doing it, so you can do it too. Streetwear has become, I feel like, the go-to for a lot of luxury brands who may not necessarily have a Virgil or a Dapper Dan. We're seeing designer Crocs, we're seeing designer graffiti t-shirts or sweaters marked up for $1,000. What's your view and take on this? I feel like they're taking from us and they're just flipping it and, you know, marking up the price. I just feel like everyone is just pulling, pulling, pulling and trying to attract, you know, the hip hop community. Even during fashion week, hip hop artists are... Walking the runway. Walking the runway and they're performing at these shows. Yeah. There's no pop artists. Mm -hmm. Everything is hip hop, hip hop. I love that our culture is being embraced, but at the same time, uh, the disadvantage is seeing the prices sky rise, where, you know, oftentimes we can't even afford to buy these pieces. Why do you think there's so many entertainers, hip hop artists, who are reaching out to brands who are doing these capsule collections? Well, I don't think they're reaching out to the brands. I think the brands are kind of reaching out to them. They see their Instagrams, they see their personal style, they see that this person is emulating them. So they want to reach out to these artists to, you know, you know, make that next step as far as them capitalizing on their own, you know, fashion brand. And it's really smart for these brands to partner with these entertainers because um, they have an audience and, a, and an audience that spends money. We know Virgil Dapper is going to the high luxury brands. We have someone like Cardi B who decided, she's always said from the beginning, you know, I mix my highs with my lows, but I know my fan base. I want the price point to be skewed right, so she's partnered with Fashion Nova. So how do you think young designers should feel about this? Like, should they be inspired that they're seeing all these different people they may idolize or love working with these different powerhouses? I think it's good to do it with Fashion Nova because it's it's making it affordable. That's what's more important. You know, it being affordable, you know, it being accessible, that sort of thing. So I hope hopefully, you know, everything is really her, you yeah. know, not so much Fashion Nova mm -hmm. and she's just a part of it. Mm -hmm. I hope her personality and her style is really takes over the collection. Now let's take a question from one of our viewers. 
My name is Adam Kellerman. I'm 25 years old and located in Buffalo, New York. My name is Joe Salvatore. I'm 26 years old, located in Buffalo, New York. When you were 26 years old, what do you wish you would have known back then that you could have taken forward if you could go back and talk to yourself? I would tell my younger self, take advantage of every single opportunity um, and don't be scared. There have been times when I was younger that I may have thought that an opportunity was too big for me and I was nervous, so I didn't pursue it. Or maybe I'm in a room with somebody who inspires me and I had an opportunity to approach them and I didn't because I was nervous. I think if I could go back, I would really take advantage of all those opportunities um, and put my fear aside um, and just be speaking in my truth and always just be genuine in everything I do. Not letting fear define you. Absolutely. Yeah. Ducky? Well, when I was 26, I wish I was like more of myself. I held back a lot. I wasn't as outspoken as I am now. And I was just very shy. I think me being guarded mm -hmm. from the world kind of stopped a lot of opportunities. So it's, 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 it's a win-win, but I was just very like, I didn't want anyone to know this. I didn't want anyone to know that sort of thing. Yeah. So I just wish I was more like open. open. That's a wrap for Good Looking Out. Shout out to our guests for stopping by the show and of course to all of our viewers for tuning in. 